Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Our panel is already lined up, so let's convene tonight's summit. And today, joining us, Dr. Hani Zubeda, political consultant. Hello, Dr. Zubeda. Uh, Josh Haston, international spokesperson for the uh, Etsy on uh, Block. Hello, Mr. Haston. And here in our Tel Aviv studios, Dan Perry, international affairs analyst. Hello, Dan. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, so very much uh, for uh, joining us today as our main topic, Utopia or Dystopia. Um, should Israel pursue a two-state solution for itself? Let's take a closer look and pick it up from there. Just days before the Independence Day celebrations, the political rift in Israel seems to only be widening. For the 16th week in a row, the masses took to the streets across the country in protest of the Benjamin Netanyahu government's proposed judicial overhaul. This week's rallies come just before the country turns to commemorate its fallen on Memorial Day. And perhaps for the first time since its establishment, there's a genuine fear this sacred day will turn into a political battlefield. So with the clock ticking down on the prospects of reaching compromise over the judicial reforms, maybe it's time to call it a day. If tensions are getting so out of hand, can governance and trust be restored? Or is Israeli society too fragmented? On its 75th birthday, should it stick together? Or is separation the answer for the state of Israel? So let's get uh, to it, uh, gentlemen. On its uh, 75th birthday, uh, should it stick together? Um, or is separation the answer for the state of Israel? As always, we begin with our quick fire round, 30 seconds each to pick up your, to lay out, uh, rather, your uh, initial stance, and we pick it up uh, from there. So Dr. Zubeda, please take the lead. Well, for years I've been thinking that we should stay together, but then I remembered the book of Benedict Anderson, Imagined Communities, and it seems like the faction, the political faction that's controlling now the state doesn't want to stay together because they're doing everything to separate us. I would like to remind our viewers that Israel is not the state of the Israelis, it's the state of the Jewish people, and what the current government is doing is giving a divorce to the Jewish people in the United States, the reform, the constructivist, the constructionist, and all the rest, because they don't see us as one unit. Mm, and we'll obviously uh, pick it up from there in a split second. Josh Haston, uh, your thoughts? No, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous to talk about separation. We should stick together, united as one. Look, our enemies are looking at us right now, and they're seeing disunity, and I don't doubt that disunity is there right now. But separating from one another, that's not a solution. What happens when you have somebody like myself living in Gush Etzion? I'm going to go to a different country to visit a relative in Herzliya. That's preposterous. We need to put our differences aside and come together as one nation. Absolutely. Last but not least, Dan Perry, your take? Uh, the fact is that Israel... Um, Israel is in the grip of an increasingly toxic cultural war between a modern, sophisticated uh, side that has earned uh, the shorthand startup nation and a variety of other sectors, mostly religious, uh, with a phenomenal birth rate in some cases, who, if they became a majority, would turn the country into a version of Iran where uh, a medieval form of the Jewish religion would hold sway over all aspects of life. So this talk of separation is basically a desperation ploy uh, by the modern side for the contingency where the religious uh, rightist vision of Israel um, becomes paramount. And uh, gentlemen, let's uh, uh, please feel free uh, to interact from this uh, point onwards. Uh, I do want to begin at the end, perhaps, uh, Dr. Zubeda. Is this idea essentially a rerun of the two-state solution vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinian? It, in the sense that in the long term, it is just encouraging the dehumanization of the other side. Well, I, not exactly, but if you don't mind, let me first re reiterate two points my colleague Please. here said. He said, it's ridiculous, should I travel to a different country uh, to meet my relatives? Yes, you are, you're doing it. You're traveling to the United States, you're traveling to London, you're traveling to many other countries, the UK, to meet your relatives. Two, you said the main point is, we have enemies from the outside. Yes, we do. They're not going to stop. But the problem is that we have enemies from the inside who undermine the notion of our state. The attempt, well, in my opinion, some of the people forgotten the other part of democracy. Yes, majority rules, but minority 
have always retained their rights. And in this current constellation, as it seems, the majority doesn't really understand the minority has the ability to retain its rights. And it seems like there's a steamroll over all of our democratic yep. rights in terms of we won, we want to control everything. It doesn't work this way. Uh, I, I have to challenge a democracy. I have to challenge whether they're really the majority. I think there is a real question I agree. about which part, which parts of Israeli society are on which side of what. Because more or less, you see this in the polls, about a quarter of the people of Israel support these reforms as are, although I think they're pretty much dead in the water at this point. That quarter is the ultra-religious and the fascistic far right. Uh, the half oppose it, and a half in the middle, and this will determine which way this goes, by the way, are uh, the Likud voters uh, who are stuck in the middle and have been in an alliance with the far right and with the religious that may not be sustainable for much longer. And I have to disagree with you, uh, Dr. Zubeda. It, it isn't coming from the government. The government doesn't want to, uh, to, to to separate Israel into two countries. They would rather depend on a phenomenal birth rate of the Haredim to guarantee themselves a majority, assuming they stay in alliance with the right and rule as they wish. And it would be a horrible, illiberal, and untenable way to rule. But that is their plan. I think the talk of of separation is actually coming from the other side now in the opposition and, and I, I think we I should agree there's no there's no there's no dispute between us i agree the talk of separation is coming from the liberal camp but the one yeah. who is pushing us towards this discussion They're pushing, is the government yeah. who steamrolls oh. all uh, democratic and, and by the way yeah. by the way if i may i think a lot of the talk is basically meant to message to the right wing in israel that if they really persist in in pursuing okay. things this way they should not take us for granted us okay. meaning the liberals along the coast okay josh haston please I, try I, if i can yes yeah. I think it's abhorrent. It's abhorrent to me that that you know we're calling each other enemies. It's abhorrent to me that we're comparing the government of the state of Israel to Iran or saying we can become in Iran. These are absolutely scare tactics. We just had an election in November where the majority of the country uh, voted for the bloc that we have now. They did and not. Forty nine percent. Forty nine percent. That's, that's in, a, in a coalition Rush. system. This is how our system works, and the Rush. coalition is a right wing Rush. government. Rush. Whether you like it or not, you cannot say a majority vote. Gentlemen, I mean, uh, gentlemen, we really want to hear all of you, but we can't. We can't hear you all at the same time. Of the state of Israel, Naftali Bennett was the prime minister of the state of Israel, and he was leaning on a solid majority. And you and your peers constantly argued that was still the prime minister of Israel. It was a whole shebang, and there was a party, and you all enjoyed it. But that is the same thing. When the shoe is on the other foot, you feel it's too tight. Majority, with all due respect, there wasn't there because Meret and, and Ballad were not, did not pass the threshold by a slim margin, but it is. And, and, yet, and yet, Dr. Zubeda, the, the, have, they did not offer 61. to separate. Yeah, Josh, please. I'm sorry, you have 61, you have a majority. That's how the system works. And I see the other guests here are Agreed. crying. Because their parties, those who people who they prefer, in you, power, you didn't say they have a majority in parliament. Right you said a majority voted yes. for them, and that is simply untrue. Forty-nine percent. This, 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 this is a coalition system where you have sixty-one. That's how the system works. I'm and not again, repeat you have seventeen the majority weeks did in not a row. Vote for this unfortunately, End of, of a story. sour grapes protest, who are not accepting the election results in November, who are uh, comparing us to Iran. Really I've seen late. comparisons of Netanyahu to Hitler. What's going on here? What have we what have we even come? That that this is the way people are talking in Israel. We're gonna have a separate country, we're gonna have a country of Judea and a country of Israel. That's we absolutely absurd, it's unattainable, and makes absolutely no sense. I'm here as the right winger, the token the right winger, and I'm saying we should unite. I'm calling for <laughs> unity amongst all people. And here you go, I can I'd like to recall for this year I'm calling for separate countries. Ridiculous. Well, you know what? Why you know ask yourself though. Let me just remind you, with all the, Dan, may I? Let me remind you, when you started with the Nazis, you, you overstepped the realm. Let me remind you the pictures of Rabin in NSS uniform, the pictures of Barack. So your camp has a lot of... I didn't images. start with the Nazis. Well, I'm telling you what I'm seeing on television. Well, I'm telling you about the images that I'm seeing on TV from the protests. I'm, happy I'm not the one bringing TV. up the Nazis. Happy. What are you talking about? I'm happy TV. I'm happy TV can be seen in the occupied territories. And here is another issue which you must address. The majority of the people right now is taking uh, a course of democratic action. May I also reply, That's please? Yeah. At some point? Please, right. then, yeah. Yes.
This government has an inflated majority because 6% of the vote of, of, the, of uh, the other side was did not make it past the threshold. They got 49% of the vote. With that very minor mandate, they are trying to install an autocratic democracy like you have in Poland and Hungary, Turkey, uh, and, and in the past in Russia before it became a full dictatorship because that's where these things go. Now, that is a very aggressive and radical move, and it is freaking out that part of Israel that is in opposition that was in power about a year ago. And, and by the way, I have to say it is not that implausible practically because if you essentially took the Tel Aviv area, 10 kilometers wide, 100 kilometers up and down the coast of the Haifa So why area. stop it too, and, Dan? Oh, why? Hold on. May I please? please? And hive that off from the rest of the country. You would end up indeed with two countries with 5 million people each. And the coast, let's call it Israel, would have pretty much the highest per capita GDP in the world outside of Luxembourg, would be 80 to 90 percent secular, uh, 80 to 90 percent center-leaning and left-leaning, and the opposite would be the case in, let's say, Judea, which is the rest of Israel. I'm not recommending it, but it's not so ridiculous to contemplate. Not recommending, two, when, but when, threatening when, it to When an two extent. groups of people have such I, antipathy I, I, between them, be. it's not crazy to contemplate it, yes. It should not be regarded as a threat. It's a suggestion right now. The current government is doing everything to split the people. They call people traitors. They are violent towards them. They do everything to discredit them. We just heard a lie after a lie trying to relive or rebuild the truth. It doesn't work this way. If we are brothers, and I assume that would be a sentence at the end of this, and not an imagined community like Benedict Anderson, then show us we're brothers. That's the deal. So, so Josh, is, is fake unity better than no, than, than no unity? No, I think, I think we need real unity. I think we need to be unified when things are good. I think people need to accept the democratic process and not be sour grapes. And, you know, uh, and not make these radical, insane mm -hmm. comparisons that we're becoming mm -hmm. Iran, that we're becoming some radical country. Well, we are. And, and again, That's I said this last time I was on your show, yeah. I guarantee you 95% of the people don't even understand what is the judicial reform, what is it about, and how it is actually necessary, okay? But you have people who are gathering, who are either anti-BB, who don't like Ben Veer, or don't like Smotrich. They're gathering together on Saturday nights, and they're having these massive rallies. They so don't even Josh, understand you, how you the judicial reform is absolutely you, you necessary. Can, you and can will diminish not take it. away from the democracy, which is the state of Israel, and these are scare tactics being used, and that's what's causing the disunity. It's coming well, perhaps from, the, perhaps the viewers then. Medina Tel Aviv, this, this country of Tel Aviv, which is absolutely absurd to suggest country that the they coast. should go on their own, five million people in perhaps. Perhaps, state, uh, perhaps the viewers Israel should know else. what the reforms really were. Preposterous. They wanted the government to to appoint the judges and to be able to even overrule its puppets by majority of one in the parliament, which basically means that the prime minister becomes omnipotent. That is the model that you have in Hungary. And I think you have vastly underestimated the degree to which that political overreach has created toxicity in this country. And, and, and you get what you deserve when, when we have to confront a desire by the modern part of Israel to perhaps escape this fate. Dr. Zubeda, 10 seconds before we take a break. And you just call 95% of the Israeli people stupid. They don't know what they're doing. They're out there on the street just because they hate Bibi. And then you call us um, um, ludicrous, ridiculous. Okay, we will, that are we will continue you, calling each other problem, names please. after I'm the sorry. break. Uh, gentlemen, I'm, we're taking I'm a few minutes break, and we're back with the summit. Don't go anywhere.